folks, this is Deborah Byrne. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to see you again. Hello, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mike. Hello, Mike. Hello, Mike. As you can see her qualifications. Well, we've already grilled her, so I don't know. Well, you guys, it's your chance to grill. <laughs> well, talk, can you tell us about yourself? Uh, other than what's written here. Uh, personally? Yeah. Um, sure. I uh, moved to the Green Harbor and Marshfield area oh, about 18 years ago uh, from New York. Um, raising a family. My daughter is 12. I have a stepdaughter who's in college. Um, working right now um, down in Quincy. Um, very active volunteer wise through 4 H in Norwell, um, which is a barn that my daughter um, is involved in horseback riding, um, as well as cheer coach for um, Marshfield's seventh graders. Um, and also Green Harbor Beach Association, which my husband um, does with me also, which we coordinate events for um, Green Harbor with um, Labor Day events and movies on beach. All right, so we're just going to. So, what jump over. initially made you interested in applying for this job? Um, well, I would definitely say one of the interests are, um, you know, as you do my resume, I, I do, I have been with a company for quite some time, the company that I am with, I do stay for a while, I'm looking for a place to call home to settle down in. Unfortunately, the company that I'm with was purchased three times now. I don't know if you remember the last time when I was here, but we were purchased, oh, about five years ago um, through Lateral Group, then through DST, and then two weeks ago we were pur purchased by Broadbent. Um, so there's been a lot of turnover, a lot, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of um, don't know where the position's going and or going anywhere. Um, so seeing something within a town hall, which is a community, of course, town, <laughs> this is, I hope it doesn't go anywhere, but so I'm looking for stability. Um, so that was one of the reasons of why I looked at the town hall as well as the position. I felt as though definitely has many different um, duties, responsibilities, achievements, qualifications that now, the only the difference between some of the positions in the town hall and this particular one is that this board meets sometimes. This board here is very right now doesn't have a lot of uh, planning issues mm -hmm. on it. Doesn't have uh, site well one site plans on on there, but right now it just has uh, subdivisions. Um, but sometimes meetings here can go much longer mm -hmm. than the average than the let's put it this way the contracted time frames um, for the rest of the rest of the uh, town hall. And I'm, I'm assuming that. Sabrina, obviously, because she's with the selectmen, uh, and she's in a different position. She's not union. Sure. And this is a union position. Um, hers doesn't have a restriction on time. And this particular spot wouldn't really have a restriction on time either because um, when we're meeting, sometimes meetings go long. Okay. Um, right now, they seem to, you know, we, we probably finish around 9.30 at night for the most part to 10 o'clock. But in the early days, it used to go to 11. So some nights can be longer, depending on what it is, the project. And, uh, and then there's the, when we go on a walk, site walk, sure. sometimes it's on a Saturday usually or on a Sunday, mm -hmm. depending on when the board can meet. Mm -hmm. So some of those duties, too, also apply uh, to this type of position. Mm -hmm. We're looking for someone who's available to, do, to be flexible. One of the concerns I would have is the flexibility. Mm -hmm. well, I can answer the concern that you have being um, with my background and what I've done in my career. Um, nothing has been 9 to 5 for me in about the 35 years that I've been working. Um, because in the sales, hospitality, event planning, secretarial business, those three qualifications of what I've done, nothing has been 9 to 5. Because you have events that start at 6 or you have meetings that start at 6 or Unfortunately, everyone's left, and there's another planning committee that we all have to meet and come together, a volunteer group. So 
I'm used to juggling, you know, those kind of hours. Um, that's okay. I tell you in advance, respectively. I do have something planned that day. There might be you know, something we can work on. I mean, well, things in things in life work. <laughs> you know, some things are scheduled yeah. with just you know, just life in general. And then there are pop up stuff which we work with. I forgot my question. <laughs> I forgot my question. So keep going. We'll come back to it. <laughs> well, basically, we meet every other week, mm -hmm. which would be from basically with Park Center from mm -hmm. 7 30 or 7 to 9 30, 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be probably once, uh, probably once a month for a Saturday meeting, which would be a site meeting. I assume that this is a salary position? It is a salary. Well, it's a complicated situation, I think. That, I think yeah. they're complicated because they made it a union yeah. position. Right. Um, but that's that's up to management to figure mm -hmm. out how they're going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. um, right. one, one, I guess where I was actually going with it is we meet, generally, we've been meeting every week, it seems like, for right. a long time, but generally <laughs> we meet every other week. Yeah. Well, that's what's, we, we, yeah, but because of things happen. Right, right. so... Normally, on a normal schedule, we'd meet every other week, and then we have some Saturday visits. But one of the complications about this position that made us somewhat uncomfortable with it being a union clerical position mm -hmm. is that, in some ways, you have the attributes of being a department head, mm -hmm. in that we're only meeting periodically, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of independent work. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of times when there's no one here who is your direct supervisor. Sure. Because the board is your direct supervisor. There may be other mm -hmm. people you can collaborate with or go to, mm -hmm. but your supervisors are a board, not any one person. Right. So I guess my question would be, how how do you feel about taking on a role that's closer to a department head type role in mm -hmm. terms of being um, self-sufficient, self-directed, knowing when to reach out, when to handle things on your own? Um, well, I think with any position, whether, you know, whoever starts at the position, some of it is going to be trial by fire. You're going to pick up something because someone you told me last time we were here, she was here for 18 plus years. There's been technology, there's been different things that you want to improve on. That's also going to come talking to all seven of you to find out, Jim, you're looking for something with email, you're looking for something more technology-based, you were looking for something, you know, clients make sure that if you have someone come in that's bad, things are going to happen. It's it, With a board like this, you're, you're going to have to go through the flow of the day, um, write things down and call the individual person if there's something that needs to be addressed. I mean, there's, and of course, my own personal professional skills of dealing with the situation and or what I might have in mind, how a filing system and or communication goes is how I have to follow through with it. One of the other, one of the big things that happens here is, is everything that's submitted to this board has, is time sensitive. I mean, completely, you know, when a developer comes in and submits a set of plans, uh, clock ticks. Mm -hmm. right? So it's a question of, of going up, submitting that, and having it stamped in, it goes up to the clerks, uh, and then can, making sure that the board is aware of is complying with with that time uh, stamp, or we get extensions. Mm -hmm. um, so Maryland, for the most part, uh, the, uh, Maryland, for the most part, is taking care of making sure that the board's aware that we have to meet, mm -hmm. or we have to get granted an extension of time. And so, and sometimes you're dealing. Uh, with a conversation from the board, not necessarily alone, to our lawyer, mm -hmm. or the town's lawyer, mm -hmm. and, um, and dealing with issues that arise from land planning and things like that. Mm -hmm. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of things that aren't in necessarily in the job description that are, that are in the job description, or in the description that frankly, I don't necessarily know this board knows. Of. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Well, you might learn them with a new person is going to be on board. <laughs> no, <laughs> You're going to no, have to ask questions. No, right. But you know what I'm saying is that yeah, the board right. is not privy to everything that actually occurs here during the day. Sure. Uh, uh, what the motions are. So it's not like we can actually instruct you to say, listen, take this here and take it there. Right. Uh, no, but I think that um, you've been in, in positions where you've dealt with the public and dealt with various, mm -hmm. you know, 
entities or people or oh, clients, sure. right? Oh, absolutely. But the companies represented had certain kind of procedures and processes in place, mm -hmm. right? So give us an example of a time where maybe you had to kind of explain that or find out what those processes were. Maybe there's a new kind of event that came in that required some different things, maybe dealing with a union or dealing with, yeah. you know, some labor or something, and mm -hmm. how you, you know, came up to speed on those rules and regs. Well, you have to talk to the key person, first of all, that either that it presented it to you. So you have to find the facts of, okay, well, when is your deadline? What are your hot points? What is the direction of where this needs to be completed? Um, one of the things in, in my career of what I do, and this will be one of my secrets, is I might give you a deadline of October 1st, but really you have until, let's just say, October 5th to really complete it. And that just gives me the comfort zone in between, because there are going to be some tweaks and problems that are going to be in between there. Um, also, looking back on history, there, there must be something, either a program or an email, something that's going to give you some type of clue in regard to a situation or, you know, a change of something that you have to follow through in. Um, those would really be the two key things, is talking to first the individual that is giving you the information, they're the ones going to have most of it, and then really kind of going back through the email process and or, you know, talking to someone that's going to be somewhere. I mean, they're, they're, I feel as though there really is going to be an answer at one point. Am I going to be frustrated? I think anyone would. You know, but as long as though you have your your you know your ducks in a row to say, okay, Deb, you have to go. You know, either you know go talk to Dan to make sure that his, yeah. the financial statement's coming in, or that you've achieved your deadline, and giving myself the grace periods in between, um, that will help out with anyone who starts the position. Yeah. I think so we're we're kind of a large board, so there's typically somebody available well, somewhere. <laughs> but for the, for the most yeah. part, you know right. the. Planning board agent works with the chair on the agenda. Yeah. I'll work with the chair on what's happening for the week. Mm -hmm. and that's really the, the, the main source of communication uh, between well, I, I the think all of, us, all of us have email and cell phones, I, with I, the exception of one person. Yeah, I, I understand that, but you know, it's the chair who kind of sets the agenda oh, and knows what's absolutely. going on. Right. And so I, I just want to ask another, another question because you've got such a great you know, customer service background. That's a big part of what this job is all about. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you've dealt with some difficult people at times. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. So if you could give us an example of someone, um, and, take, and you can take a second to think about it because I don't want to put you on the spot either, but an example of a time where you had someone come in pretty hot under the collar and you kind of had to handle that situation. Because we do have people who come in here and they don't always know what the rules and regs are, and oh, sometimes sorry. things are perfectly right with what we're doing, but mm -hmm. they don't agree with it. Mm -hmm. So they can get pretty irate. Sometimes I want to take it out on you. Oh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. And they probably will. Um, empathy is the biggest thing in the beginning. I will apologize. I will listen to them. Um, I will hear what they have to say. I will probably repeat what they have to say. An instance that I brought up with the board here at my first um, uh, interview was, I think we were sitting inside a conference room, and it was actually in the hotel industry. Um, and I was supposed to bring an IT line in through one of the doctors that had a big presentation. This is in conference rooms that are 500 plus people. I was new. I thought I touched all the bases. I touched base with all the different salespeople, convention planners. And when it came down to it, when the conference started, the IT line, the cable was supposed to come from the outside, wasn't hooked up, and that actually has to go through NSTAR. So when I tell you there are some really, really mad presents, uh, doctors who were presenting at the conference, I was in a lot of trouble. And I stood there, and of course, you want to cry. The best thing is, though, is honestly to empathize with it, tell them that you're sorry, tell them what the reaction will be as far as concluding, or say, unfortunately, I have to get back to you within an hour, but get back to them within the hour. My biggest thing is you're looking at me and say, I'll get back to you by 2 o'clock, or I might get back to you by 3 o'clock, because there has to be research. Sometimes answers aren't always given at that very point. But if you can at least talk and tell them, I've heard what you've said, empathize, repeat what they've said, take down your information, I think it does settle a lot of aggravation. Which, oh, Stormville One. Oh, it's actually a, a town in New York um, that my family's in. Okay. So yeah, so that's where I came out. Near uh, where is Stormville? Through White Plains, up that way. Near Carmel, New York. Like Carmel, yeah. Do yeah. you know Lake Carmel? Carmel? Of course, yeah. My wife's from Carmel. <laughs>
Really? Yeah, and my sister and brother will used to live in Stormville. <gasps> so funny. Right. <laughs> What's your wife's last name? Uh, her maiden name was Johnson. Uh, oh, that's a big, yeah. Well, do you know the DNA agency? No, all right. Let's help you. All right. So, do you know the DNA agency? Oh, sure. Yeah. That's yeah. my brother in law. <gasps> that is a small <laughs> world. <laughs> See? Yeah, it is. <laughs> that's funny. Well, all right. I have it's a good question place. for you. So, if we were going to contact three of your references, which three would you have us contact? Um, to be honest, yeah, I'm comfortable with all of them. Okay. Um, I can tell you the relationships if you wanted to write some notes um, so you have an idea of who they are. If that's maybe um, sure. Elizabeth Fagan was the director of sales at the time at the um, Hilton and Dedham. Um, from there, she's actually just progressed through the hospitality industry. Um, I knew her from 19, could be like 98, is where I first met her. Jackie McConkie is the finance uh, division manager at, which was DST, which is now our new company, Broadridge. So I have communication with her in regard to clients, purchases, vendor relations. Amy Brown was our former um, HR director, but the time after her company was purchased, the first time, unfortunately, she was let go through that process. Um, Lynn Williams was, who is now a director at uh, the Cape Cod Resort and Spa for the Catania. She, is, she was a co-worker of mine. And Mary Lou, um, just so you're at a level of where I am now with the, the company, she's one of the senior client service liaisons who does a process through similar to what I do. so many changes I've had in my company. Um, being the fact Pembroke is a hop, skip, and a jump. The qualifications I feel as though what I can carry through and come to the town hall and bring my knowledge I think it could be a right fit. So I just thought it was a good opportunity. Cell phone, but the, yep. I probably, probably won't. But when I sit here, uh, it's a visual That's right. to be able to look at something like that. Yep. And uh, so sometimes for, for certain people on the board, that might be, uh, that could be improved. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's an asset. Uh, some people may think some of the older things are, are not, but realistically, a lot of times when you sit in here, uh, Things like that can bring up a recollection of something that hasn't been taken care of, mm -hmm. uh, and so that that's kind of for me uh, my uh, not a comfort, but it's something that we can look at and reference quickly without having to take a look into a file and, and bring up uh, notes about something that maybe was lost. Uh, and for me, what I would do here for whichever candidate gets it is to move subdivisions over and put subdivisions here and put a heading over there, site plan, mm -hmm. so that so that we can tell which site plans are still current, which site plans have been completed and off, off the table, mm -hmm. uh, or coming forward. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we use it. Some of us are happy with a spreadsheet. But Some, well, <laughs> to me, that's a spreadsheet. Quick. But it's not up to date. That's not up to date. That hasn't yeah. been touched. Right. Oh, man, so touched that's, my, that's my point. But, you know, and that's okay. You deal with so many different people and personalities, that's fine. I mean, even if you walk into any office now, I'll be honest with you, we have whiteboards. Our whiteboards are our goals, or our whiteboards are client active. So if that's what you're comfortable with, that's okay. You know, that can still be... I just think it gives a record. Sometimes people go, well, you know, how many how many lots are in that subdivision? Yeah. It's a quick reference point. Uh, so I don't necessarily know in changes that, I mean... It's one of those things that could be updated. Maybe there's new, maybe something else we could do um, to improve mm -hmm. the, the way people are. 
Well, I think, you know, if I was to take a position, this wouldn't be something that would be changed it's right away. It's not a high priority. No, I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, I'm not one that's going to come in and, first of all, change something right away. I have to get acclimated with what it is. And then from there, you know, there could still be, I mean, it's easy enough to still send out an email, right. but you could still update right. this. You know, that's fine. Right. But uh, this here would give you a quick synopsis of what actually is still out there. Yep. Uh, with the, with the, the uh, site number reference number to go and look for it in the file. Mm -hmm. um, it's a quick, to me it's a quick reference. It's something that can be used or not utilized utilize or not utilized. So mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to stay. It could be, it could be changed, altered, or whatever. I just think it's going to take some time to, to get that related to Oh, sure. oh that's what I'm there's saying. Yeah, there's so many. Yeah. Especially you were saying the person was in the position for 18 that's a lot years. to unravel. <laughs> 20 years. It's not going to happen overnight. No, it's not. No. <laughs> we, don't, we don't expect it either. Right. Uh, it's just going to take you some time. Mm -hmm. And it's a patience. Mm -hmm. And you have to put up with it. Mm -hmm. Or vice versa. <laughs> I, I'm not, I won't be trying to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we're, we're certainly patient. <laughs> we have a moment. I <laughs> say, one of us doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> so, any last questions? No, I don't. No, think thank so. you for coming back. Yeah. Oh, thanks for having me. But in. could you go around and just tell me what department or how you're affiliated with the town hall? I know Jim, I was with you already, and Becky, I was, and Dan. But are there like, is there like construction, electrical? Are you, are you? Oh, we're the town. Oh, we're the town. We're only elected oh, members of the oh, planning board. Jim, so, Jim is, a, is a civil engineer. Yeah. In, uh, by trade, in right. his own life. Right, I remember, yeah. Uh, I'm a construction professional. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm a lawyer and a realtor. Okay. Thank you. I'm an electrician, but I'm on two boards. I'm sitting on this board. Mm -hmm. I also sit on the DPW. Okay. And I'm a local publisher. Okay. Great. Excellent. Well, what I think it's retired. Yeah. You did do mortgage stuff, right? I think you did mortgage. Oh, is that what he did? Yeah. I think so. Yes. He, Brian has been the keeper of the rules many times. Yes. Right. Brian, Brian will be the one person who can tell you most of your zoning bylaws and most of your planning board rules uh -huh. and regulations by heart. Really? <laughs> so this is what happens when you don't come to a meeting. <laughs> That's why you gotta show up all the time. Oh, yeah. I gotta show up all the time. <laughs> Defend my place. Defend my reputation. Excellent. Any questions for us? Um, I guess what would be the next step in this in the in your decision process? What do you or when do you like to fulfill? One question. How available are you? Well, I am presently employed. Um, so if I was to be, you know, given the position um, and things worked out, um, it would, would specifically have to give a two-week notice to my employer. So, and then, um, because summertime, I'll be honest, I do have a vacation planned. Um, so there could be some overlapping with that. Yeah. Um, I think we had talked about trying to see if we can reach consensus or agreement tonight on a candidate and then trying to you know, move the process along fairly quickly so that we can try to have someone in place. But it depends on after we interview everyone if everyone's comfortable to that we're Sabrina ready. And she, she felt comfortable in the town would be willing to make Marilyn an offer to uh, what's the word? stand as a consultant. Co consult. Just, to assist. Consult for because some they had done the same thing with Diane Tobin. Okay. Okay. Um, and if worse comes to worse, we'll all just take a, a day and Get the lay of the um, And as far as the position with um, benefit, I've never worked for a union before. I've worked next to unions in the mm -hmm. hospitality industry. Um, so is there a key person that you know, you'd be talking with, or does it? No, it doesn't. It, it, you would just. It, it's all working. You wouldn't have to worry about. You end up joining the union by being hired. Oh, okay. Uh, I think what Deborah's asking for are benefits. Well, the benefits well, that would probably come. Yeah, that the benefits are contractual. Right. Yeah. And there's, I mean, there are people in the town hall who would, um, you know, do the, who, who will do our onboarding. Mm -hmm. It's all approved. Great. Well, thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Have a good Don't night. stay too late. <laughs>
<laughs> We're trying not to. Thanks. To find out from uh, when I talked to Sabrina too that uh, we should uh, probably do some reference checking because they don't do anything. Okay. There's no quarry check even? They, I guess we could request. Well, we okay, but it's not done as a matter of rules and policies. Actually, actually, I think the I think the law changed on that too. Is that uh, originally when I got hired at the hospital, they core checked you prior to being employed. Yeah. I think now you get employed, and then they can then they can they core check because there's a there's usually a, uh, ninety days. No, or, I know. Well, according yeah. according to Sabrina, they don't do anything. No, so don't. We, want, we, want we, don't to have a, we don't have a policy with regard to background checks or Corey that we would unless, be following. I guess unless they're working with children. We just, we just got a job in the situation in high school. Everybody has to be Corey checked prior to. That's, 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 that's different. But that's a school. You're that's going into work at a, at, a, at right. a school, but you have employees. Right. They're just doing a background check on everybody who's employed that's going to be on that site. Yeah. Difference about being employed, though, is I think they changed that. There's no okay. town policy on background checks or Corey. I thought that was well, part of the theory was that you know well, the, maybe, that the town that's has the I employment mean, policies. I'm for a couple, I'm for a couple check, but she, I was I asked if they check references, and she was like, no. So we're responsible for checking the references. Yeah. I don't put a lot of value in references because, like, they're obviously it's always someone down. It's like when I give them a good, yeah. you know, so it's like, what's the point? <laughs> right. So yeah, can't this pull isn't one down. Some <laughs> 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 my son pull them all, pull all three up on Facebook and see what yeah. I can. It's <laughs> more value questions. You may be able to get some good information. <clears throat> Folks, ready for the next one? Yep. <sighs> so once we're done with these interviews, do we discuss this in open session, or do we go into? Now we have to discuss it. Unless there's some particular issue about someone's background or reputation. I think you probably need to go on the test. No, you can't. Uh, you can't. Oh, because we didn't put it on that? No, because it's, it's yeah, yeah. The, you, there's, um, if you were talking about a specific contract that you were negotiating, you could go into executive session to talk about, like, um, you know, the specific terms of the contract that you were negotiating. But when you're hiring, apparently, the only, other than the screening interviews right. that could take place in executive session and did take place in executive session, the interviews in the hiring decisions are supposed to be an open session unless someone has an issue about someone's character, or background, okay. or reputation. That, but then you have to give someone, the person who's the subject of that discussion has to give prior advance notice and an opportunity to attend or not and bring someone or not. So there's a whole process to that, but I, I haven't heard that anything has been raised regarding any of the applicants that would trigger Work that. Yeah. Excellent. Matthew, welcome back. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hi. So as well as you guys can see, uh, if you look at Matthew's resume, it's, it's pretty extensive. Um, a lot of planning background. Associate planner in Georgia. And a lot of skills around the software that's related to planning. Mm -hmm. As well as clerical software, like Word and Excel and PowerPoint, Outlook. Yeah, um, not Outlook so much, but um, I definitely Word, Excel, PowerPoint, I've used all those quite I mean, very extensively. Right. And I look, I've used a little bit, and I could easily, I'm sure I could easily pick it up extremely quickly. But it's a pretty standard email program I've, I've used a lot of this. I mean, I'm probably one of the more sort of unusual candidates you would come across, obviously. Uh, my career path has, 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 you know, not necessarily been what I've, you know, it's gone in different directions. Uh, but um, uh, I think I've, a lot of the things I've done, I've benefited from, and, you know, getting a PhD, you know, Improves your skills in many different ways, and you're still understanding that thing. Uh, you know, so, yeah. so, with the amount of administrative work done for this, I mean, this is a pretty administrative type position. Um, you know, is that going to be exciting enough for you with a background like this? I mean, you've got extensive background in architecture, um, you've been a lecturer, you've spent a lot of time in academia. 
academia and open screen. Um, but you've got a lot of, of skill sets here that are pretty high up um, in, in comparison to what we're, you know, we're requiring for the job. Yeah, no, it won't be a problem. I mean, you know, most, most architectural jobs are, um, I don't, is anybody here an architect? Or, mm -hmm. It's not. Um, Engineer. I know what you want to say. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, I, I love architecture, but 95% of it is drafting, which which can be tedious in, in some ways, even if sort of the final result is interesting. So it won't be a problem. I mean, I'm sort of in an, a, maybe a somewhat unusual just position. I'm kind of simultaneously sort of overqualified and underqualified, maybe for a lot of what I'm applying for, because I have been away from sort of real world employment, so to speak, for a while. Um, but essentially, you know. Um, I've decided, you know, I've been a lecturer, which is basically to say I'm sort of a part-time adjunct faculty member. And as you probably know, you know, adjuncts are, are very low paid. And it's, it's become really, unless you have connections or you're sort of your superstar, it's just virtually impossible to get a tenure track position. Um, you know, and having done a PhD, of course, that was my ambition. And, and then sort of having published some things, I really thought I was doing well in that regard. But it, it's just, it's just, it's really, it's just become so difficult. Um, and so finally I sort of decided I just, you know, it's time to go back to real world employment. Um, but having been away for, for a while and having kind of done both architecture and planning, I sort of have to start, I wouldn't say it's square one exactly, but I sort of have to, you know, go back to that. So that's definitely not a problem for me. I mean, my, my job for the state of Georgia, a lot of it was administrative and so forth. Um, and so I think that's sort of, you know, a step along the path. And uh, I think as long as sort of what you're doing in the larger picture is of interest to you, you know, the issues and so forth. You know, planning appeals to me a little more than architecture because it is at a larger scale. There's a little more social issues, politics, economics involved. Even if it's, even if it's a, say, a town like Pembroke as opposed to a city like Boston, uh, there's always that larger scale that I think is, is really fascinating. Um, and what about like grant writing? I mean, one of the things we had talked about at one point was, you know, could we ever get enough funding to have a real planner position versus a clerical position? And right now, it's seen as somewhat far-fetched from a financial standpoint. Um, but we do need to update our master plan, and we do have Old Colony Planning Council who can help us with that. But there are some things where we haven't really taken a look at some of the planning issues in town as much as we might like to. Um, do you see it within your bailiwick to look for grants that might help fund some additional hours for other people to either come in and help you on the planning side or on the clerical side so that, you know, maybe fund part of your position through a grant so that then we could yeah. use some of the money that's budgeted for someone else? I mean, how, how do you see that as a, as a possibility? I'd be um, delighted to sort of write up um, grant proposals and funding proposals. I think I could certainly do a very good job on the writing side of those. Um, in terms of my expertise or my knowledge in, in the world is more sort of coming from academia. Uh, you know, I've obviously I've applied for some sort of grants and fellowships and so forth as a, as a PhD student. Um, and what you're talking about, I'm sure, would be quite different. So that's not necessarily you know, those sort of <clears throat> grants are not something I'm sort of highly cognizant of. Uh, it's just not something I've done before. Uh, again, within academia, I've done it quite a bit, but not, not, a, not in the sort of thing you're talking about, I think. But I think, you know, as far as writing that sort of thing up, I'd, I'd be a strong, I'd, that would be well within my skill set. I think that would be something I'd be quite good at. Would you um, have an interest in going out and scouring for those kind of opportunities? Oh, definitely, definitely, but um, I don't necessarily have a, a background in having done it previously, just, just so you understand that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think I could be a person who, who you know, could come in and, and try to be um, proactive in looking for opportunities or, or you know, uh, getting advice from all of you and, and then um, being able to sort of take the initiative on my own and <coughs> try to learn about things and look for opportunities and so forth. Um, that would be something that's new to me, but I think that's not a problem. Can you do anything with heating? I don't know. Architects have to 
to know HVAC systems, don't right. they? <laughs> I don't think this qualifies. HVAC systems. Uh, uh, use a bigger hammer. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, talking about that, though, that would be relatively, that would be in the, the lower third of the priority list, though. Yes, it would be wonderful, but yes, it's in the lower. It's, we need to get our day-to-day -day work done first. Right. I agree. Right. So the day-to-day -day work can be, um, you know, you probably interruptions during the day, the phone's ringing. You never know when, you know, someone out there, a constituent of ours, if you will, will give you a call asking a question about what may be going on down the block. Um, there's, a, there's a, I think, a very uh, significant customer service component to what this position does because it's really the face of the planning board of the public when they first encounter the planning board. And that goes not only for you know, the public, but also goes toward the, you know, the developers that may come in or anyone who's, you know, going to be putting a site plan together with us or a business owner. Um, so a big component of this is really trying to um, provide the type of service that would lay the ground rules for them because they may come in here with not a lot of knowledge on how Pembroke works. So, you know, we, we're really requiring this position to become pretty quickly Conversant in how Pembroke does things, what our bylaws are. Uh, so, can you give me an example of another time in maybe your career where you've been put into a situation where you're kind of new, um, may not know all the rules? How, how quickly can you get up to date and what would be the approach to that? Uh, I think, um, I mean, I think to some extent every new job I've had has had some of those, especially as an adjunct, you're often sort of thrown in and just told. Here's the course title. Go ahead and, and write up your syllabus and figure out what it's going to be. Um, so I think that's something I'm comfortable with. Uh, in terms of my sort of what my approach would be or my strategy, uh, you know, I think it's important to, to listen and learn from other people. Uh, if possible, to talk to the sort of person who's done the job previously, or talk to other employees within the town of Pembroke um, to be able to look at the the relevant documents, planning, zoning documents, the regulations, maps, and so forth. Um, but also, uh, just sort of not to be afraid to be proactive and, and to sort of jump right in, I guess. Um, I think communication, I mean, generally your, your biggest assets, so to speak, are going to be your coworkers, and so communication is crucial. And then with, with the general public, also, uh, just just sort of being, uh, being able to sort of communicate reliably as well. And, and, so people know that even if you don't have the answer, you'll call them back and tell them how you're progressing or where you stand. So people feel that they rely on you as a consistent person, um, and they don't get frustrated with with sort of a person who kind of drops out of contact or they don't know where they stand and that sort of thing. So I think you know, having taught, um, well, I think I mentioned this last time. I was giving just sort of having taught for the past about two years now, uh, primarily undergrads, some graduate students also. Um, I think my sort of my communication skills and my sort of interpersonal skills have, have definitely strengthened in that regard. Um, so yeah, I think, I think the you know I mean I think the paper, uh, certainly the paperwork is crucial uh, to sort of do those things reliably, but the communication at the end of the day is what I would imagine the most important. And I'm sure both sort of by phone and, and by email, uh, um, sort of both critical uh, critical to, to sort of communicate carefully and, and be aware that everything you say, you know, sort of for better or for worse, everything you say is sort of on the record um, and you're sort of responsible for those things. Um, have you had another time where you've had to learn bylaws or, regu or regulations? Uh, I haven't because my, my previous uh, job in planning was for the state of Georgia. So that was more of, we were more, uh, 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 we would basically review, well, we had a number of things we did, but we would, one crucial thing is we would review all the comprehensive plans that were submitted by local governments throughout the state. This was when I was in Atlanta. Um, and also, we would sort of promote quality growth and good practices. We would travel around the state, uh, sort of having charrettes and other things, talk about uh, different problems, you know, in different parts of Georgia. Uh, so that's something I'm definitely familiar with, but I haven't previously worked in a local government uh, or in, or in a planning capacity at the local level. What was the criteria for reviewing the comprehensive plans? Was it just um, a sort of friendly advice, or did you have a statutory role in the review? 
It was statutory. Um, in practice, generally, uh, we were uh, we were kind of expected not to really raise a fuss unless there was a serious problem with the plan. You know, we definitely got some plans that we thought could have been better, had certain issues, but you know, we generally maybe just approve them anyway. But if there were certain problems, especially with the the current land use map and the future land use map that they are required to submit. Um, and so those, if there were problems with those, if there were inconsistencies or things that could be legal issues, we would have to, to, to say, okay, this is an issue. And then there are just sort of certain sections of the plans that had to be submitted. There are also things called service delivery strategies, which were for infrastructure, which in Georgia, uh, there's a lot of, obviously it's very different from here, so there's lots of issues with annexations, uh, uh, municipalities annexing and extending out into unincorporated parts of the county. And so often the different local governments are, are competing with their water and sewer uh, lines, actually. Uh, sometimes it'll be a city versus county or a city versus other city. And so they'd have to submit these these documents, which we would check to make sure nobody was overlapping, you know, no sort of wasteful duplication of services and so on. Primarily it was water and sewer. There could be other issues as well. And so those sorts of things, again, sort of a statutory role where we would, um, you know, just have to, at a basic level, just have to make sure there weren't conflicts and overlaps and so on. Okay. I was going to say, so, I mean, one of the big things we have to do is keep track of timelines. Yeah. Um, so how would you go about, you know, if we have five site plans. If we don't respond to them within a certain amount of time, they become automatically accepted. We have subdivision plans that expire after a certain period of time, although there's a question as to whether it's our obligation or the developer's obligation to watch the clock on those. Um, what would, what would sort of be your strategy for learning and watching those sort of things to help the board make sure we don't mess up on those kind of things? Mm -hmm. I think I'm a pretty well-organized person, I can honestly say that. Um, and so I think, you know, have everything laid out either with Excel spreadsheets or other sort of graphical things and just sort of keep everybody in constant communication, probably through C sort of CC emails, I'd imagine just to make sure we're all on the same page and, and I'm sort of saying clearly, this is where we stand right now, here's what's coming up imminently, here's what's further on the horizon. Um, and to really sort of be on top of those things on a day-to-day -day level and not to let things sort of just kind of slip out of sight or, or get lost in the shuffle to make sure everything is, is organized in a very clear way. Uh, and yeah, really just to, to stay on top of things and not to be, Maybe not uh, not to let one project sort of become so stressful or, or sort of take up so much of my time that I'm losing track of other things. Like not to panic about one thing and say, oh, you know, the next three days we're only going to do this, and then that's when other things start to sort of maybe slip away. So to be, I think, efficient at multitasking uh, and, and really sort of make sure make sure that you're on top of all. So I kind of like things. where you're going with this as far as the, you know not panicking over things. So. Um, or hopefully not. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, things I can't happen. promise. People are human. Um, you know, we like to talk a lot about competencies, behaviors, and uh, you know, the big buzzword now is emotional intelligence. And, um, you know, kind of understanding that, that there are times when you need to kind of keep calm in the face of adversity, if you will. So, is there an example you can bring us from maybe your career where you know there was some stress? happening in a project, maybe a timeline that was pretty tight, or a couple of people asking for your time all at the same time, or things all kind of falling into place, mm -hmm. you know, in a kind of a short timeline where you, what, what kind of, uh, how did you kind of handle that, or what kind of ways did you use to, or, or uh, let's see, skills did you use, or uh, behaviors did you use to kind of manage that? Um, I think maybe being a, a PhD student was maybe the, the sort of the best example of that, even though it's not a real-world job, so to speak, just because you've got, on the one hand, you're expected to make progress on your dissertation, and then you have to sort of keep up with your classes, you, you're a teaching assistant, um, um, and then later on, I actually taught a class too, and so you're sort of, you're kind of wearing a lot of different hats, and you really have to make sure all those things are, you know, it's up to you at the end of the day, you have to just make sure you're being responsible to all those different people who have expert, whether it's your students, whether it's the faculty, people, the class you're taking, or the dissertation that you're working on. It, it's sort of the onus is on you to make sure you're, um, or the onus was on me to make sure I was keeping track of all of 
balance obligations I had. Um, and I think just, uh, uh, I think just, you know, sometimes it's just really taking it one step at a time. And once, you know, if you're, if you're carefully well organized, then at least you know, uh, then at least you sort of can keep track of everything, you know where you stand. Uh, and if you do fall behind, at least you know exactly where you stand on everything. And at least you can kind of prioritize and say, this is crucial, you know, this can wait till tomorrow, this is a, this is a deadline in two hours. Um, and once you, I feel like once you're well organized, uh, then at least you can, um, um, then at least you can take it one thing at a time without stressing about those other things. So, so, so what about strategies to organization and priority, prioritization? Any kind of strategies that you use to kind of get yourself in a position where you feel very confident about, you know, the timelines and everything mm -hmm. else? Um, I think just sort of. Um, just um, based on what your coworkers tell you or what, what deadlines you know are coming up, what we've learned from experience to sort of prioritize more important than other things. And to, um, um, again, to make sure that you're, you know, that you're well organized enough that you don't spend an entire maybe eight hours a day on one thing and lose track of those other things, where maybe just that 10 minutes, just putting that 10 minutes into something that sort of keeps you on track, that one phone call or something. But if you're so, you know, if, if you don't see that thing. So for me, just, just trying to stay calm uh, and definitely keeping track of what the deadlines are. Yeah. And also kind of, um, sort of what you said, emotional intelligence, paying attention to people, whether it's all of you, of course, or, or my coworkers, or, or a developer, or whatever, and understanding what, what things are crucial to people and what things are, are, are important, but less, you know, less imminent or less essential. It's not an easy job because you've got to manage the expectations of the board, you've got to manage the expectations of the hall, you've got to manage the expectations of the public. So, um, I, the next question I was going to ask you was on prioritization. I mean, um, I, it may not be a fair question, so don't put too much pressure. But, um, you know what, if someone else's priorities aren't the same as yours, but you really know what the priority is, right? I mean, you've got a timeline, you've got a project that needs to be into the time, or at least the process needs to be continue, and someone else can come in and completely throw you a curveball on that. But their priorities, of course, would be way above where they, you know, where, where reality yeah. is with a priority. So handling that, so that could be something like a, you know, uh, you know, a citizen coming in and saying they're doing something down the block. You guys need to do something about it. You know, that kind of thing. Well, I've, I guess I should back up. Uh, I've been in, even though I work for the state of Georgia, I've been in enough sort of local government. Uh, sort of zoning meetings and that kind of thing to know how contentious they can be. And so I think it is it is important sometimes to kind of let all, all, a lot of that stress or the stress other people are feeling or the intensity of their emotions or the intensity of their criticism to sort of to kind of take it with a the to just sort of take it with a grain of salt and let it, you know, be the sort of be the adult in the room in a sense and, and kind of let it, you know, don't take it personally, just kind of let it go and, and you know, take it in a mature way. Uh, I think in terms of your question, my you know my ultimate responsibility would be to, to all of you, the board, uh, and then also to um, the town. Is the town manager is that the right title? The administrator. The town okay. Which is town administrator. Big difference in Massachusetts. Yeah. Okay. You have no mayor, right? It's just we have no mayor. Right. We have the board of selectmen who manages the town administrator. But the planning board, but the board, but we're an autonomous board. But we're an autonomous yeah. board. Yeah. Um, so my primary sort of loyalty or obligation, so to speak, would be to the priorities that 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 all of you give me, uh, or at least I would imagine, and then also I assume to the town administrator to. Well, no, 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 just no, 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 okay. no, 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 executive function in town have a question of us or have we need to collaborate with them it's important to be professional and respectful with that right. department but in terms of the actual priority and supervision and the work yeah the work but, that it, comes from but it normally goes through the board yeah. and there are definitely i mean i think they're definitely coming mean, again back to you what you're talking about. there will definitely be times where i have to sort of maybe politely but firmly say to that uh member of the public or that abutter or that stakeholder that developer or whatever, 
uh, I hear what you're saying, but that's going to come up next Wednesday, or, or that's, you know, I'll, I, I can get back to you by next Friday on that, but I can't do that now. Or maybe, you know, in, in some way or other, uh, again, to sort of try to be the adult in the room, so to speak, but not to be sort of, not to let somebody else's emergency become my emergency, unless it's clearly something that all of you would regard in, in that fashion. Just, just one, one question. Why Pembroke? What made you decide you wanted to join up, join up, work with that? Well, um, um, again, I'm sort of having decided to leave academia, uh, I do want to stay. My, so I'm originally from, I grew up in Newton, uh, you know, a suburb obviously much yeah. larger and closer to Boston, but somewhat similar maybe. And, uh, you know, I have my father and stepmother are still in the Boston area. Uh, my mother is in, in New York, so not too far away. And I decided that... <coughs> You know, it made sense to, I mean, my parents are getting older, and it just seemed like it made sense to be back here in this, in Massachusetts permanently. Um, and um, so at that point, just looking for jobs in, in urban planning, um, uh, really all sort of throughout eastern Massachusetts, Boston, suburban areas, and so forth, even a few in Rhode Island. Um, and so Pembroke was one of the ones that there. So I, you know, I, you know, before I applied here, I, I'd never been to Pembroke before. Sort of, I, had, I had heard of Pembroke, uh, but I, I certainly can't claim I had any special knowledge or interest in Pembroke before, before that. But I think every, I mean, definitely, you know, when I was working in Georgia, you know, every town, you know, whether it was, you know, Atlanta or, or a small town in the countryside or something in between, uh, there was always some interesting issue or some interesting problem happening. Uh, and sometimes, being in a, in, a, in a small or medium-sized town is even more interesting because you can sort of understand the whole thing, whereas if you're working for the city of Boston, you might just be sort of a tiny piece in a, in a, in a gigantic yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, I know that in your time at, at the uh, Georgia Commu Department of Community Affairs, you worked for two years, then you worked, it looks like, two summers. Yeah, that's while I was, I should PhD. clarify that, yeah, that's <coughs> while I was a PhD student. Uh, and so they, they had me uh, come back for two summers to work. Uh, and in retrospect, actually, I probably should have been working on the dissertation or doing some, being smart about progressing my academic career. But yeah, that's what, that's what happened. That's yeah. the I would definitely move down here. I'm definitely not a fan of a long commute. And I'll, I mean, just having, yeah, done it today. Uh, and also just I would want to be, uh, you know, either in Pembroke or near Pembroke, just kind of to be rooted in the, in the place where I am so that I sort of know what's going on here and, and, and so forth, yeah, and get a sense of what the community is like. Yeah. And also, of course, just what, yeah, the housing, would, I'm sure the housing would be more affordable around here as well. But I mean, it's just, it's just incredible what's happened in the Boston area. It's really it's just amazing. state that, that uh, this is primarily, I, I know you, you, to me, you have a lot of uh, education, uh, but this is primarily a clerical uh, position, and there's really no, your co-workers are yourself, in a way, in this office. Um, That's kind of what Becky was saying, it's more of a department head position, because you don't have... Uh, well, of course, but we do, but that's not how it went out, but I mean, basically it's a union position, which has, uh, and I brought up to the, to the last person, was, uh, was that sometimes, even though uh, there's not really a time frame for work, like on a Monday night like tonight, this meeting, or a general meeting with developers and things like that, can go much longer than, let's say, from 7 to 9. Some of these, some of these offices close, this place is, right now is empty where the last uh, department had. So some, in the 18 years I've been here, uh, we've had meetings up to sometimes 11 o'clock and Jim can, can vouch for that. Um, and those are Monday nights. Those are Monday nights. Now, it's, normally we meet every other Monday night, but we have, for, for years we've met almost every Monday night, uh, depending on how the workload comes in, because we are on a time-sensitive requirements by the state to meet those requirements of the applicants, uh, whether it's public hearings, uh, notices, and uh, 
So, and sometimes what mostly happens from, would be on that government would be to move the meetings along to to meet those requirements of open public hearings and to make sure that the the chairman understands that and we may have to stop right now to open another hearing to close a hearing to then to con make a continuance uh, and then to control the minutes of, of meetings it would be in, in the, your, that application your, res your responsibility um, then we have site walks sometimes to go out and see the sites to give a visual of what we're, we need or what we're talking about. And then the other thing that didn't come up the last one, because I didn't think about it, was at town meetings. Um, when we have articles on town meeting, we would be required to be there to make sure that we have what we need for that particular uh, uh, meeting with the town, whether it's to a change in, in zoning. You know, anything that we had to do, whether it's land acquisitions or things that part of this board may be uh, uh, move, moving, or even road acceptance, uh, things like that, town, town meeting. The so Monday, those are part of those uh, yeah. jobs. Yeah, the Monday night's not a problem. That was mentioned in the, um, in the details of the, the job posting itself, so right. that's not a problem. Um, and if there's a need for me to work on weekends, I forget it. Well, yeah. Sometimes on Saturday. Yeah, that's <coughs> where we're going. Maybe a Saturday, something for a site visitor. Based, based, based on availability, availability of applicants. I think my architectural background could help a little bit with some of the site visits, or just in terms of reading site plans and, and looking into some of those, those sort of things as well. That sort of level of familiarity. Uh, but yeah, that's all that's definitely not a problem. Uh, and yeah, in terms of uh, sort of working here, um, yeah, sort of whatever, uh, whatever sort of the extent of whatever interfacing I need to do with other coworkers, whether it's a little bit or a lot or none at all, uh, I think I can sort of handle those situations. Okay. Yeah. You do have a, a department of planning and zoning, is that right? This is it. No, this, this is, is it. it. So <laughs> the planning, so the way it works. I mean, it's listed on the. Yeah, so yeah the don't believe it, what you read. <laughs> so the way it works is that the planning board is an independent board mm -hmm. that is responsible for planning board functions, legal uh, functions of the planning board. Um, zoning. The zoning board of appeals and the building department both share. The building inspector is the zoning enforcement officer, okay. and the zoning. Um, Zoning uh, Board of Appeals is also housed in that office. Okay. The Zoning Board of Appeals is actually appointed by the Board of Selectmen, and, and the building inspector is um, reports up to the town administrator and thereby to the Board of Selectmen. So the Zoning Board of Appeals and the um, building inspector and inspectional departments are a complementary mm -hmm. entity, but we're sort of we have somewhat separate legal functions and somewhat separate we legal go houses. Up the rules. And then they enforce them. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sometimes <laughs> they try. <laughs> how often? How often do appeals? How often do appeals go to them? <coughs> All the time. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very common. So, so we're we're an appeal. So we're probably going to move along now. Yeah. Yeah. So there are things. Well, but the ZBA has their their findings. Generally, we get a copy. Of them. Okay. We probably could do a somewhat better job of following what's going on over there so that we don't get surprised at the last minute. Well, we recently had an issue where we sort of yeah, realized well, very late in the process that yeah. there was a decision made that we thought was not in, in right. keeping with the town bylaws, that it weren't decisions that the ZBA should have made. Right. So the, it turned into litigation right. that maybe we could have. But we, but, but headed off here's what happened. No, I don't think so. What happens though is we get the copy of that in, in our packet. Every week we get a copy from the ZBA. We do. It's up to the board to take and go through that and take and pick it up. How, however, it would be nice. However, yeah. however that, that one was filed pretty late with the clerk. Well, that's true. Almost at the end of the appeal you know, process. process. Yeah, but I don't think it goes to it. I don't think they get I think they have to go and get it stamped yeah. before, it, before the clock stops. All I'm saying is that well, we sometimes right. we could, it would be helpful if maybe the, our, our clerk helped us well, stay on top of that stuff. Right, but, yeah. but, but, they have to, but they have to write the decision too. So until it comes out in print, 
It's, it's hard for us to know. It's not a decision. It's, it's, we get them all. Right, we get them oh, all. I know I get them, but I don't always well, notice the significance. Yeah, we get them all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll hopefully let everybody know soon. Yes. I guess what, what's your sort of timeline, more or less? If you have? I, think we're, I think we're hoping to make a decision tonight or next week and, and let everybody know where we're at. And your availability, if it comes to that? I guess immediately. Uh, <laughs> definitely let me know. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty much sure if I have Um, okay. I'm obviously living in Boston now, so there might be a certain amount of commuting for the first few weeks or something like uh, that. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much available. Okay. Yeah. And just obviously just sort of stay in touch so I have an idea of what the situation is in there. Okay, great. Okay. okay, well, thank you very much thank for coming. Have a great night. Appreciate it. Yeah, have a good night. Thank night. Rachel's here. Come on up, Rachel. So we're, this is the Andy, Paul and Tom show. <laughs> so. Well, I, 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 um, I'm on a board with Rachel. Rachel okay. is on the uh, CPC. Uh, so I'm familiar with Rachel. Um, so it's the Andy and Tom show. Well, no, I still, <laughs> I still want to make sure that she understands. I still want to put some clarification yeah. on some of the things that we do and are required for this, uh, for this board as far as, uh, you know, like, there's discussions about um, like Monday nights that we meet and that the hours are not necessarily set like the rest of the town. Well, it's sort of like a CPC meeting where it can go longer than than a defined end. Um, and then the question is, is that normally we meet every other, but for a lot of times we meet every Monday night because of just the workload and the time sensitive requirements by the state to meet. Uh, and to uh, to take action on certain things, whether it's time, whether it's public hearings, uh, whether it's a, uh, um, writing, writing uh, um, the approvals and, and the, uh, whatever restrictions we have on a, a site plan or on a, on a, a subdivision. Um, then there's also <coughs> we do site walks that uh, can occur on a. And basically, it, a lot of times it's up to the board when they can meet, whether it's a Saturday or a Sunday morning, something that works out for, for you, uh, uh, for the person in this position, or for the board in general, works going to work out best for that site walk and the developer. Um, then there's also, and I just brought up about uh, town meeting. A lot of times we have articles on town meeting, and we kind of <coughs> want to make sure that we have everything there to present to the town. Part of, part of what we've done in the past. Um, the, the only thing that's different about this versus with Marilyn is that this position is going to be a union position. And that's, that's sort of um, the, the preference of the selectmen. Not necessarily the preference of the board, but we'll work for it. Um, not to say that we're against that, but I'm just saying is that it, it, this, it opens up a fine line as to how many hours and compensation and things like that, and that'll be worked out um, over the course of time. I think we'll try to adjust to that. But otherwise, um, I'm already familiar with you, so I will open it up to the other two. Tom? No, just you know, uh, as it stands right now, you work for the CPC. Yes. Uh, if you don't have a time. I'm actually hired as an independent contractor. Okay. This will give you a deal. Yes. Okay. Uh, why are you changing, changing states? Sorry. Why are you going from CPC to planning? Is, is, is the CPC a full-time job? No, it's it's very part-time. Okay. 
But she doesn't have to actually probably give that up. No, she won't. Yeah. Um, Not necessarily, I don't think. That's a, that's a, we can flex. Oh, we don't know. We can, we can talk about that one. We don't know what the rules are. About. Yeah, we don't we know, know the rules about, about conflicts and whether or not you can Well, see, that may be one of those things you have to talk about in the executive session. <laughs> no, that's no. I, I mean, I think that'll be up to her, but it'll right. it, it, it there'll be an answer. Right. right. And, and okay. I, I thought that there's a whole issue about whether you're a special municipal employee versus a municipal employee, whether you can have multiple jobs. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, so we'll have to be a discussion on something. I'm sure that you know the Mayor and the Mayor and the Mayor and the Mayor and the Quite similar to what you do for uh, CPC. Some of it is, yes. Yeah. Uh, I think the only other thing that is going to be different is going to be the uh, uh, actually clocking in the, the stuff that comes in and making sure that it's documented. It's, everything is time sensitive. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm sure you're proficient with it. You can say you're proficient with Microsoft, <coughs> Excel, and Word. Yes. I think that's basically. Well, what would your strategy be for maintaining a, a sort of view of all of the projects that are pending, all of the site plans, all of the subdivision plans, and all the deadlines that we have to follow here in town? I'm glad you asked that question, because that was something that um, I was responsible for when I worked over at Massasoit as the assistant to the executive director of communications there. Um, and actually, I had an Excel, because she was... Um, she, that was her main reason for trying to find somebody to hire somebody. She had never had an assistant before, and she wanted somebody to kind of keep her on track. She was having difficulty doing that, meeting deadlines and things like that. So actually, um, I used a simple Excel file where um, we had a lot of things due at the same time every year, over and over again. For instance, our college view book and things like that. Um, so I really just had a simple Excel spreadsheet that would remind me, and it would, I had um, a tie-in to my Outlook account that would send me reminders and, and things like that, so that I was always on top of what was coming up next. That sounds like a strategy. So you've got some great uh, experience in customer service based on what you've done in the past. Absolutely, you know, yes. Uh, the legislative aid requires a lot of interaction with the public. Um, so from your experience, and I'm sure you've seen you've seen the gamut from people very happy to people very upset. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so give us an example of, uh, of a time when someone may have been pretty upset and how you kind of steered the conversation back to kind of um, calmness or got them an answer that they were may, may not have been happy with but were satisfied enough with it. Sure. Actually, um, it is, It is. I think, back to when I was a legislative aide. Um, during the time that I was at the State House as a, as a maid, we had a lot of phone calls from constituents who were having difficulties um, finding employment and were there for um, signing up for financial assistance through the state. And they were very upset, naturally, um, because some of them were in jeopardy of losing their homes and so they would call us looking for assistance and, and answers, and they were very upset. Um, and the way that I, it's difficult sometimes to explain and put into words, um, but the way that I would deal with them in their situation was I always tried to be, um, well, also obviously compassionate, but try to relate to them and try to understand what they were going through um, to try to help get them um, in a situation where they could, in a mind frame, sorry, where they could try to deal with things, um, you know, think through things rather than use emotion. And I just, in my own life experience, I think I've related to so many different experiences like that, and, and people um, and their life experiences, that it makes it easy for me to talk to just about anyone. And so I don't find that difficult when people come at, with me, at me with emotion. Um, I'm able to take a step back, take a deep breath, and kind of 
look at all of the um, options and solutions. So when you were thinking about this position, what kind of research did you do to find out more about it? Um, I, I mainly just read um, the job description and I went to your web page. I looked at um, what you have there for your documentation of meetings and things like that. Um, and then I went, well, I went online to actually get just a basic definition and explanation of what a planning board is and the different things that it's responsible for. Tell us what a planning board is. <laughs> Council doesn't I'm know. I'm on your team. <laughs> Council doesn't know what our, what our duties are. What our obligations are. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Did you find out anything that you weren't expecting? Not really, except I do have a question. I heard you earlier mention um, about the legality of the board. There was something um, in the description that I read online that there was that you pretty much take votes and that sets the policy and sort of sets up um, what, you know, what goes before the town, things like that. But then there was another aspect of it. They said that the planning board has two functions and it's not really just legislative in nature, is that? So, so we do, I, I'd say we have two main functions in this town and it can vary from town to town. We. We work on bylaw changes and bylaw review, so that's more of the kind of, and that has to go before town meeting. So if we want to change a bylaw, we would prepare it. There'd be some coordination with town council, and there would be a presentation of some kind at town meeting to get a vote because it can only be changed at town meeting. And but and zoning. yeah, right. so so whether that's a um, a zoning. Yeah, you write the zoning bylaws. Yeah, we write the zoning bylaws. That's right. what I meant. Really. Right. But the other piece of it is, uh, most of what we do week to week is really reviewing site plans and issuing special permits in certain parts of town, issuing site plan reviews in other site parts of town, doing sub reviewing subdivision plans, um, and hopefully trying to engage in some amount of planning, reviewing the maps and keeping those up to date and at some point we need to update our, our master plan whether we do that through Old Colony Planning Council, whether we find a grant to hire someone to come in and help us do that um, you know that's also within our bailiwick is to help to create a master plan and go through the master planning process which involves other people as well. Well we had a the last time we did it we had a committee appointed by this board to take up, basically, we took the money, put out flyers, things like that, asked the public what they thought the, the town needed, and then used, they compiled all that, brought it to this board where we, we looked at it and made decisions based on the Yeah, there were several bylaw right. changes made as a result of right. We're right. also regulatory right. in that we set the standards, construction standards for new roadways, like how wide they have to be. Well, and even in, in sort of a regulatory or judicial part in terms of our review. Yeah. So there's a lot we do that we don't even no, no. We, just, we, just do. <laughs> yeah. we just do it. The other piece that I think we've talked about when you came before the subcommittee were grants and, and sort of looking for grants to fund things like a master plan or to help fund maybe a part-time planner position or to you know do some of the other work that we're looking at in terms of uh, grant-based work that might um, help some of what we do and your experience in looking for grants and finding grants and helping to write grant applications. It could, it could be um, um, for funding, things like that, as the board comes up with. We want to put on a town meeting, for a town meeting vote to come up with $50,000 for a new, and then it's a question of getting that up to the select room, just like any other article that's put on town meeting. But I'm also talking about grants, where we go out and look no, for I grants. No, I, I understand that, but, but I'm, uh, but I'm talking about things we've actually done here, 
Right. Well, I'm asking. They can do things that yes, I'm asking whether or not we. Right. I'm asking <laughs> what, in terms of capabilities, right. of going out and looking for grants to to maybe improve some of what we do here. <laughs> I do have some experience with that, um, which I I acquired while working as the legislative aide as well at the state house. Um, I did only work there for a year, so it's just a year of that experience, but I do have... I think you had talked about experience. actually going out and looking for grants yes. for the towns that were yes. within your district. Yes. Um, maybe you want to elaborate on that a little bit more. Well, the one, the one that comes to mind right away, probably because it was the most fun to find, um, was when uh, actually a constituent here in Pembroke called us looking for funding um, for a skateboard park. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. And they were, they were we actually found one right through Tony Hawk. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. And um, we got the grant for him, so it was exciting. But um, there, are, there are so many other avenues that we could explore um, for grants for the town. So. I'm going to bring this up to you because I brought it up to one of the other applicants and I didn't get a lot into the room. We have some free time. Again. About the chalkboard. Oh, I already heard about the chalkboard. No, this is a different oh, okay. perspective on the chalkboard. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, no, I don't wait particularly for it. want it wiped out. Okay. All right. I, I, some people want it wiped out. Okay. No, I look at it as a tool. Yeah, I just heard that it hasn't changed. Like it's an older version of a spreadsheet. Right. It is an older version of a spreadsheet, but it's one that when we're in meetings sometimes, it, 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 you know, you, sometimes when you're in a meeting, you're not really looking at things, but things come up and we're talking about uh, this board. And I, I, yes, it can be utilized better than it is. Sure. Um, and whether it's uh, modified in the future or removed or whatever, but I do think that a visual. Sometimes, sure, it go off great heat. No, I don't think so. <laughs> but realistically, sitting on this side of that, I use that quite a bit to, to, to look at things that actually haven't been completed. Uh, haven't been off that board that exist, uh, and sometimes when we're looking quickly about uh, somebody coming in and wanting an extension of time, there's a perfect example of things that constantly are in here for extensions of time that you're not having to go to a computer or a spreadsheet, or maybe you haven't you didn't have the time to spit that out and sit like that. Prioritize. Well, that's true. <laughs> it sounds really good to me. <laughs> Could you translate you your Excel spreadsheet onto <laughs> a board like this? <laughs> you should just yes, take the spreadsheet. <laughs> I'm just saying that. I'm just saying this that for, some, for 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 a site, sometimes what happens is, in that's what we always use. I'm not saying it has to go away. I'm not saying it can't go away. All I'm saying is, is that it's a tool that has been used in the past and has been used pretty effectively for people who come in and they haven't finished something. And, and, um, so that leads me to a good question, because Paul obviously has need for that, and the rest of us don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you've got a what about when there's conflict oh, among board members? His <laughs> <laughs> weekly email happened spreadsheet email to us telling us where we Yeah, but I don't do email. Yeah. Oh, you sure? Yeah. You okay. Can't be so that's a good, that's, that leads to my question. So we've got a board of seven members. Some, um, are, you know, want a more uh, te technology presented to them. Not really technology, but they want an easier way to kind of access information. Others want access to the information in different ways. Um, so how do you, how do you kind of manage that and strategize around that? I've actually had to deal with that um, with the CPC. They prefer to have things like minutes, um, notifications, and, and things like that mailed to their home, you know, at the post office. And there are others who prefer an email. And I, I'm happy with 
to do whatever the board prefers. Whatever Not makes everyone one. happy, I, know, I will do one. it. <laughs> so I go to the post office and I send an email to the CPC. Um, so that's what I would do here as well. So speaking of keeping everyone happy, what do you do when you have multiple things on your plate and someone comes in with a major complaint? How do you handle your day? How do you handle that interaction? You mean someone, it could be... From the public says, you know, uh, I just got this notice in the mail and there's a public hearing and I want to know more about this because it's right down the street from my house and I think it's going to be a huge problem. And they, you know, and that Show becomes... <laughs> well, no, okay, I'm not asking how you would handle it, Jim. I know how you would handle it. That's why he doesn't deal with the public. <laughs> You're not allowed to deal with the public. <laughs> how would you handle it? Well, I think at the beginning, I'm, in the beginning, I'm sure there would be a learning curve to know what, you know, exactly, which would be the priority. Um, I think after some time, once I learned that, you know, if the, if the constituent is that is my priority at that moment in time, that's what would have to take precedence at that moment in time. Um, but I think it would, you know, take me. I, would, I, would get, I can't put a timeline on it, but it would take me a, you know, a reasonable amount of time to know what the board sees as the priorities for well, me. I mean, what if the priority was that you had to get a notice out to the newspapers and to all the abutters for a public meeting that we had scheduled and someone comes in with a constituent complaint and we are on a legal clock sure. on the um, notices to the abutters and the, about the public hearing? I think naturally, um, off the top of my head here, I think off the top of my head I would say Naturally, I would try to get that the legal notice completed immediately and then try to deal with the constituent. I mean, if, I, if we were going to miss a deadline, naturally I wouldn't want to have that happen. And I would try to explain to the constituent, this is the situation. Um, I would, of course, invite them to stay or hear. That's actually very easy. You just put a sign on the door that says, gone to the bathroom, go to the bathroom, <laughs> email a newspaper from your smartphone to say, put in the following notice. <laughs> well, no, but I, I do think that there's a piece of the job that's not easy, and that is that sometimes you can't allow yourself to be kind of uh, whipsawed with your priorities because there are things that come at you. Okay. And there are other people's priorities as opposed to the priorities of the office. And that sometimes when you're in that constituent role, I do think that's a difficult thing because we are, um, you know, we do serve the public and the developers are part of the public that needs to utilize our services. At the same time, we have things that are on the agenda already that are ahead of this person who just came in the door. And so it's, you know, you don't want to lose track of servicing the person whose notice needs to go out or else it messes up their schedule. At the same time, you have someone come in the office, and keeping that from overtaking your day sometimes can be a challenge. So being able to kind of allow someone to be heard but not allow them to take over your day can be difficult. Sure. I would say in this chair. To, uh, sometimes we get... There's a lot of stuff that really isn't in our daily work, if you will, that gets presented to us to go on the agenda. And, you know, disputes between neighbors, um, you know, easements that were between a developer and a butter. Um, you, you know, that they'll they'll try to kind of come back here and, and look for some kind of resolution. We're really not. Um, I think that's more next door than. A lot of times it's a legal issue. Yeah, sometimes right. it's right. just a civil legal issue. Right. Yeah. It's not a town issue. Well, sometimes it's sometimes it may be just a question of saying, I'll, I'll present your complaint to the board and we'll get back to you. Uh, some of it can be that simple that, first off, I, in your position, can't make decisions for the board. And that 
and that the board meets on a certain day. And sometimes, the, and, and I'll put your, uh, your question to the board to, to uh, yeah. during discussion. Well, That's the calmest way to take, yeah. I think, to deal with the public. We're going to have a 10 minute period. Right. You could diffuse the issue. Diffuse the issue. Polite and professional and courteous is the king. Right. And letting them understand that there's nothing that in the discussion that we're having right now that can be solved without the board solving it. Uh, at least interjecting their opinion into it. Uh, or whether it goes to a legal issue, and it, because sometimes, a lot of times, we have to seek counsel. I mean, some of the questions that come aren't necessarily something that this board actually can handle. Um, and we need guidance too. So. And, and sometimes it's a question of if it's going to take you time to research through the files to find the plan right. that someone wants to look at. Right. And they're you trying to discover they're not all here. <laughs> and and so sometimes finding the plan can be, can take time. And so sometimes it is a question of you know this is a realtor who wants to see the plan, but at the same time you have a you know there's it's it's not always the easiest position in that sense. And sometimes it's to be firm and say. I'm sorry, but I don't have time to research that today. Right. I'll need to get back to you by X amount of time, depending on how long and what else you have on your plate. Yeah. I think it's all doable in the course of a day, uh, sometimes, depending on what the day is. And depending on where that Monday's plan a tough is. Point. Right. Correct. It could be here, it could be over there, it could be in the trash. <laughs> Hopefully not. But then again, there's all, you know, and sometimes is that we also, this board deals with a, a engineering plan that we have on, that we use through, through uh, subdivisions for reviews and site plans. And, uh, so that's another avenue of uh, the ability sometimes to get information. Uh, plus, well, speaking that we're way over on reviewing, I mean, uh, bidding out our peer review. That, that's one of those other, other things that can be looked at for information uh, that we may not find here. They, could, they, some, they have it, should have it on their uh, computer system. So, no, I'm good. Me too. All right. Thank you very much. Any, any last questions? Availability. We've been asking everyone what your availability would be if you were offered the job at the start. I can't believe you guys have a problem with that board. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Thank you very much. So we'll you want to take a five minute recess? Yep. Yeah. A little bathroom break. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
asked your uh, your employer was in the other night. Okay, so we're back. It's uh, 8.35. We're back from our break. All right, folks. So, how do you want to do this? Well, should we take them in order? Me, Dad, and Becky already kind of talked about it. Okay. At, at our executive oh, session, oh, which we're, we're allowed to do. <laughs> we were in the subcommittee, so, oh, so subcommittee. we had to decide who to bring okay. up to you guys. So, just, you know, kind of... I guess I'd like to hear from Andy, Paul, and Tom. What do you guys think? Well, personally, I like the idea of uh, having a local person at the position. And that would be uh, Ms. Michael. Uh, she seems quite qualified. Uh, Mr. Hines. Mrs. Burns, I think she's probably as qualified as, uh, as Rachel. So, I don't know guys. Well, I, well, all three candidates bring some great things to the table. Oh, they do. Uh, you know, I think Rachel's got some local experience, which is great. Although I was, I, you know, I wanted to ask the question of Matthew, whether he, this would be, you know, kind of a boring type of job for him. Um, but, you know, he answered the questions pretty well. Um, he understood the fact that, you know, the priorities come from the board. They got that pretty quickly. Um, he seems to understand, you know, how to kind of juggle some of the things that um, are nice to do versus the things that we have to do. You know, the idea of doing some planning, which may be something that's, you know, in a strong set of skills, I think he realizes that that's not going to be the top priority of what he does every day. He's going to have to deal with the public, he's going to have to deal with the board, work with the board. So I like that um, in his answers. Um, I, I, you know, I like what Rachel brings to the table as far as organization and a strategy to kind of organize the work. Um, I think both of those candidates got a pretty good handle on what the scope of work is. Um, I didn't get as much of that from uh, our first candidate tonight. Mm -hmm. um, her background's pretty different. Not that those skills couldn't come along. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's advantageous to come from something completely different to something new, but you bring great skills with you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think she's had some experience dealing with uh, people and customers. However, I think the answers that the other two candidates So I think it's, you know, to me there's a lot that, uh, you know, Matthew can bring to the table in addition to, you know, the basics of the job, um, which is appealing. On the other hand, I think Rachel's got great experience. I mean, being a legislative aide means constituent services and understanding how to prioritize some of those things. Um, she gave some pretty good answers on the grant process, too, which is something that we're interested in. So. They're two strong candidates. Yeah, I, I, uh, well, I'll let you guys. All right, so um, 
I thought the, I thought all the candidates were um, were very good. Um, reading um, their uh, resumes, resumes um, I would be concerned if uh, if Matthew was hired. I'll be honest with you because um, I think the problem. I think one of the problems the board has is that you need to have somebody who's going to be here in, in, in this situation for a long time. I think the problem is, is that uh, because of his education and because of his qualifications to many different things, and not necessarily this, um, I don't think this is going to be enough for him. For And, and when you start having to take him, factor in, him moving closer, and then um, and he's not he's not from this area, and, and, and I'm not sure the money is going to be enough <coughs> to take and support uh, that that commitment. I I, I do agree, uh, and I've dealt with, and I'm, and I'm, I'm being out in the open is that Rachel it works up at the CPC and does a very good job. As she is local, um, and I know that. Looking for myself, I'm looking for somebody who is going to be committed to the town of Pembroke for a long period of time, uh, and I don't want to have somebody come in and then us have well, this board have to go through something in a short period of time to take and we go through this uh, uh, requirement of applying for. I do see I see your point, but I think you got to look at any candidate. That we hire come to you in a year. No, I understand. I understand that, but most people are more inclined if they actually live here and have a family here. They're gonna, they've, they've already set up roots here. Um, you know, and to me, it's an enhancement to have somebody that lives in the town of Pembroke already. Um, but that's that's just that's just my my opinion. I, I I'm sorry. Thank you. But I, I concur with Paul. I, I felt that one that uh, Matthew. Well, he's very qualified. Uh, this position does not require a PhD, which he is. And also, uh, looking at his experience, moving through the years, he doesn't stay in many places very long. And I, it just concerned me that he had a PhD. He's he's an educator. Just sort of surprised that he he had some experience in planning, which was good. Well, I think if you look at Rachel's, you'll see that she hasn't stayed in there very long either. No, and, 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 and I guess my concern he, is that we're making that a question, lot of assumptions. Yeah, I think the other night uh, Matthew would answer that question because that was my concern with him. I said, you know, it looks like there's some gaps and stuff yeah. in your work, and it was actually he was either doing his PhD. Party was teaching, yeah, and that's why it didn't he all like flow. He said that too. Um, <coughs> well, also, I think that part of the problem, part of the reason why he's looking to settle down, is because the way universities these days treat lecturers and adjunct professors is really quite horrible. What they do is that they they sign you to a contract for a semester at a time, right. and you that's, have no job security. That's, that's what happened with him. I understand yeah. that. And so I felt like he was very clear that he's looking to settle down and make the move, which is a big commitment to make no, a move like that. And I felt that that showed a lot of commitment to this position, that he wasn't going to sort of commute here for as long as he had the job and then find a job somewhere else, right? That he was actually looking to relocate down here. Um, I guess there's a part of me that's, that, can, that hears what you're saying about the the um, qualifications go far beyond what we asked for for the job, but I think he also could bring a lot to the job that no one else really can because of those qualifications. Um, I feel like he has the ability to help us upgrade our technology in terms of how we manage site plans, how we manage you know, the keeping of records. Um, a lot of this, I think, he has the ability to yeah. upgrade so, at the same time that he could... So elaborate a little bit on that for us, because not having the benefit of the other meeting, we didn't get too deeply into that question with him. So, sure. 
these Synodus Wrestling, they got the software that Merrill uses to produce these maps. He knows it. He can do the same thing with these maps that I can do. Bring in GIS maps from the state that are already there. Okay. Um, stuff like that. Like those maps I printed out to you a few the other night. Yeah. You'd be able to you know, throw them up on the screen here or something like that. Okay. Um, and that's, and that, he was the only one of the three that brought that kind of understanding Technical. of the technology oh, available. Well, we understand that, that he is the only one of the three candidates that had as any plant experience. It's obviously the GIS and that job. Right. Uh, well, and he also has the architectural experience. So in terms of reviewing site plans and understanding site plans. That, know, that's, he, he can look at a plan and know what he's looking at. Architects don't look at site plans. Sometimes they do. They sometimes look at things. I know. You may think they're not very good at it. <laughs> I know they're not very good at it. But, um, but he has the combination of the no, no. planning and architect, I, I just which feel, is unusual. I just, just because feel. he can't build a town doesn't mean it's not a pretty plan. And I also thought that he made a good point about the fact that when you're doing something like architecture, 95% of it is very detailed. Um, uh, Laborious, tedious. They get work. into a lot of stuff like how many tiles on the ceiling and how many square yeah, foot of paint and how many. So, how much compared to that, to doing letters and doing um, newspaper notices is like high level work. <laughs> high I, level I, things. I think his, you know, his teaching and his stuff that he's done, you know, assisting gives him that clerical piece, you know. Yeah, but I just, I I just feel he's grossly overqualified, though. So what's the problem with someone being overqualified? I don't think I don't he's going to stay. Right. So, so the issue with being overqualified is that we don't think he's going to stay. But there's no... I think, he, I think he, he, he's going to be under, underpaid for his education. And I think that... He's if, already done in, that for in a, years. in a short period of time, though, in a short period of time with this, this being in a clerical union is a limited, has a limited upside. Um, I don't think so. I mean, no, we can ask people. Well, we're the ones that have gone backwards from agent to clerical. Well, I, was, I well, thought we were still looking for an agent. For yeah, I think, well, I, think, I think we're looking, looking for someone who can play both roles. You're looking, 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 looking for a town planner, but you've got X amount of dollars to spend because what is what we're getting is is a union position with X amount of dollars. Yeah. And my point is is that uh, his education, a uh, very short period of time. It may be a year, it may be two years, all right? He may say, I, 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 this, I need to do something else because his qualifications will, will push him out to something else just because I think the money won't, is not enough. I don't know that um, without a lot more experience, I don't, from what I understand, entry-level architecture jobs are actually fairly low paid. Right? Yeah, but he's not, he's not entry level. That's the problem. Well, to really? get a, if, he, if he wanted to work he in architecture, a, he would be entry he level. Would be, uh, he would be entry level. But he's so, also mentioned he's had a hard time finding those positions. Um, I, think, I think probably for the same reason we're discussing now, he's overqualified for so many jobs, and yet he's underqualified in that he doesn't have that. Like, he's in some ways overqualified for an entry level architectural job, right? Yeah, he's got like what three or a few years of architecture, but you know. not not even actual architecture, does he? No. Yeah, but it's I not guess. like he has 25, 30 years experience. No. Well, it's like he, well, first off, he hasn't focused in on one thing. Right. All right, and that and that that kind of leads me to, I don't necessarily know if he'll be focused in on this particular job either. Well, he's been a student for seventeen years. Okay. What does that tell you? <laughs> it means that he wanted an academic track, and you know what? He hasn't been successful at getting an academic track. But he would, that would, which he I, would be the first person that that happened to. I, I just went through this with a family member who, who had, was on a tenure track position and was not happy with the academic situation and left to take a job that she was told to be grossly overqualified for, and she's ecstatic that they gave her the job. Ecstatic. No, and it, trust me, trust me, there. you'll be ecstatic too, but uh, I'm just wondering if, it, if, if this won't fill his, well, his, his need uh, because, because of 
his expectations of what he was going to do in the world. Well, you know, okay, okay. that's my concern. So let me just share this with you because, um, like, in my career in banking, like right now, there seems to be this, like, there's a just a glut of people who are retiring. Um, you know, the technology has like just advanced so far that. You know, the people who were kind of holding on and, you know, like to get out of the house and go be a teller for a couple, it, it just, it's gotten beyond them. And um, so now the, the employment pool that I'm, that I'm looking at for tellers is people right out of college because they can't find jobs. So I've got, you know, people who are far more qualified than me, you know, with business degrees and stuff like that, who are, you know, doing part-time tellery and stuff like that. So I think I think it's a lot of it is just the way the world is changing. Um, you know, I think if we look at somebody like Rachel or even uh, Deborah, I think that's I think those are fine if you want to keep the status quo, if we want to you know well, keep moving and try to grow this. I, I, I think I we thought, need somebody like Matthew. I thought that, that Rachel had the experience to help us grow, based on, on her legislative experience. Yeah. Uh, you know, and she is employed by the town and she lives in town, which I think is a plus. Uh, my, my real concern is, like Paul just said, that I don't think Matthew's going to stay. Right. Well, the other thing is, is that, and this board talked about it too, is we need somebody who can get in here can get moving quickly and can understand how this how this place works. The advantage of having Rachel, she already knows all the players in, in the town hall. Is all right. an advantage? Yes. An advantage or disadvantage? I was going to ask the same question. Yeah. I, mean, I think it is an advantage. Okay. I, I think Rachel's very qualified, don't get me wrong. I, I, I do think that she's qualified. I'm not trying to say that she's not. I'm just saying that that Matthew brings something that no one else can because he's overqualified. And, you know, right. so you see overqualified as well, a deficit and I see it as I an look asset. At, no, you know, you look at, no, well, I, that, that's, that's true. I look at it as, I look at it as our expectations of, of asking for an awful lot from the individual that's taking this position, number one, to do things that one, they're not compensated for, all right? But, I mean, realistically, because at one time we were talking about having the clerk and a town planner, and then we're trying to roll both of those into one, all right, for uh, short money, yep. because it fits yep. into the, it fits into a uh, narrative. Sounds like it's a good still deal. Sounding good Sounds to like me. a great deal. <laughs> but, but I'm saying this is that we may be, you, we may be going looking for that, but you may not be getting that. You may get a person in here that one, like I said, is overqualified, and yeah, it may be fine for a short period of time. But I think his his need to do what he's doing, education-wise and, and everything else, is going to drive him out of this position. I think he's got to do with education. Everyone's got to do education until they get into a job they really don't want to do. <laughs> then, can I ask why why you? I think the feeling was, okay, f I can speak for myself rather than for the committee. Deborah was a strong customer service person. I think sometimes it's easier to have someone who's not in the town and doesn't have local um, biases and ties that could influence the work of someone who should be fairly neutral except to carry out the purposes of the board. So I think she Deborah also was had seen a very consistent. Working. So she had a very strong employment record, a very consistent work record, and a lot of customer service experience and seemed to be able to handle environments in which she's getting challenged a lot. Um, and so we thought that she's just, so that they're very, what's interesting to me is that they, each, th each one of them bring strengths. And, you know, and it's not, and it's, makes the decision to me a little bit more difficult because it's not comparing apples to apples and saying, well, this person's a little bit stronger. 
you're comparing three kind of an apple, an orange, and a banana. And do we want an apple, an orange, or a banana? You know? I think we're down to pick it between the apple and I don't necessarily think we should use the banana analogy, but that's all right. Get your mind back to the table. <laughs> I, I'll be honest with you, I thought out of, out of all of them that we talked to, I thought Deborah presented the best. I thought she was, she just made a great presentation with, with the uh, screening committee. I, you know, I sat there and kind of felt like she could do anything. Um, so. Yes, one thing that's kind of, I thought. Rachel and Deborah were kind of neck and neck between the two of them, but I am hearing Rachel and Matthew were available immediately. Uh, yeah, but you, want, you don't want to leave a small gap in availability to start to keep you away from a great candidate either. Right. But well, we're I, very close at okay. Mayo. I mean, well, when this close, so, this close it, it's, yeah. a, it's a fact. Yeah, right. What I want to ask Jim, Jim. What, what's your opinion of Matthew? Uh, he'd be my choice. Okay. Okay. Uh, just because of all the, you know, what you he brings to the table. We had a couple of candidates that did have some planning experience and knowledge of GIS and AutoCAD and MicroStation, like all the software the Maryland Associates would use. And we picked Matthew and a couple of others. And that's what we presented here. He was the stronger of the two when it, on the planning side. I, mm, not really. I, mean, I have a master's, but I'm going to go up to Somerville tonight and look into sewer manholes all night. Yeah, no, no, no. I, mean, I, I don't know. I, I am. That's, that's what, <laughs> if that's what you're a master in, that's what you're a master in. <laughs> you know? Paul, you know a lot of electrical stuff, but you spend several hours a day just yeah, but pumping you, stuff around. Well, and, you guys you know. get compensated a lot more than what we're going to compensate this position. Yeah, that's my point. Right. So yeah, that's my point. I don't think this person, I don't think Matthew, if he's been a lecturer for a couple of years, I don't know what other jobs he's had to keep himself going because <laughs> those probably didn't pay enough. I understand they that. They probably paid. Per diems. Per diems. I, I'm yeah. thinking half of what we pay. Um, you think so? Yeah. And they're not all year long, right? They're just per I think, semester I think, and all that? And I think we have enough, uh, right now we have enough, um, you know, we can push this up to the top of the, I, I feel comfortable that after our union stuff there, that it was, it was kind of indicated to me that we could push this position up to the third level, which would be the high end of the position. If, 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 we chose, if, if we chose a candidate to that man, uh, how soon would we be able to hire them? Well, there's two who can start immediately. So. I, I think we just have to take a vote on who we want. Um, I, 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 you know, I do think that Rachel, if I had to be picked between Rachel and Deborah, for me, the fact that Deborah's out of town is nice, but I still think that Rachel probably has more directly relevant experience. I think Rachel could pick up the ball and run with it more quickly because she has, you know, knows some of the logistical stuff about preparing legal notices and posting meeting dates and keeping minutes. So some of that logistical stuff I think Rachel could probably pick up more quickly than Deborah, and I think she you know, I, I don't think she has the extensiveness of experience that Deborah has in the world and in, in customer relations, but I think that she has s strong experience more recently, like in the last three years. Um, so I'm not sure why she left the administrative assistant job to take a part, very part-time job. That's one thing I wish I had asked her. Rachel? Yeah. We get family. I think she has two children. Three. Oh, three. We have to be very careful about speaking about that being no, no, relevant. No, but, right, no, yeah. no, but I'm just... Yeah. No, it is be, relevant. That could be the part of the reason, that's all. Um, I mean, 
it doesn't matter. Although the other job was just in Brockton, it wasn't far away. Right. It's more like having a local job. Um, and we didn't ask if that was like a full time position or if that was. If that was also part time. Well, it, she was on the advisory committee. Um, we gave that up to be on the to to go to the part time position of CPC um, because it was a it would be a conflict. Yeah. So I, well. One of the big strengths that Rachel brings to the table is the fact that she already understands how these boards kind of work. Right. So, you know, the posting of the agendas, the handling um, the, minutes. the minutes, handling public hearings, making sure people are uh, notified of public hearings, those things. That's the toughest part of this. That, that, that's the one thing I worry about with uh, candidate like Matthew is right. those are really mundane tasks that have to be done on a regular basis. Um, so don't you get the impression that he would do a spreadsheet pretty quickly to schedule that out? Yeah. yeah. Um, the, um, the other thing we haven't talked about is there was another candidate that we did not invite back because we tried to keep it pretty narrow, but there was another candidate who also had some town hall experience. And, um, but had less overall work experience. Um, if anybody wanted to see the other resumes, we have them available. No, I don't, I don't think that does okay. matter at this point. I, she had come to a it. couple of our meetings. Yeah, okay, I remember seeing what you said. I think yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I think I, I kind of... Um, You know, and I, and I say this all the time too. When I, you know, when I hire a teller who's you know just come out of you know school and stuff like that, you know, I you don't expect them to be with you for very long. Uh, but you know, they do bring a lot to the table, and and uh, I think it's worth taking the shot. With Matthew. Yeah. Definitely would be a, a different. Um, I'll tell you something, one of the things was a, an email I got from Ed was, you know, when we kind of had been talking here was, you know, this like, almost like the three question marks, are you guys actually thinking about a town planner? Um, we haven't, the second word, second sentence was, we haven't had one in 25 years or something like that. Right, it was sort of... Like, we've always done it this way. Right, and I think it, it does sort of push the boundaries to have someone with Matthew's experience to be able to say... If what else could we and should we be looking at? What else, a town our size that's at this stage of growth, that's at this stage of, you know, we don't have 20 subdivisions a year right now because we don't have that kind of land. So the land we do use starts to become more scarce and how it's used becomes almost more important because but you, you, you kinda, have, you, you you're know. kind of limited too uh, as to what you're going to be able to, to plan. Uh, well, you know, what design. The, First off, is that take the center for instance. Yeah. Right, you have a site site plan comes in. Uh, to this, what? Just tell me what he's going to do. What what having a town planner was going to do to change that? Oh, I don't know if he'll change a specific site plan review, so much as he, he, we. You know, when we're, I don't think that this board is only supposed to be doing site plan reviews and <coughs> subdivision reviews. But to answer your question, though, Paul, is that there may have been some preliminary traffic um, analysis done on the center so when Cumberland Farms comes in with a relatively large project, you know, the board is prepared to ask for something very specific based on right. where the intersection is or isn't what's that, abutting it, right. all, it, all of those questions. But that, isn't that what we're doing with our town engineer? Right, but we have to... Pay extra for all of that. No, if he has, but if he has time and the interstices, well, he might be able to give us. Another thing that always comes up though is when we do a new zoning bylaw, it's kind of always like, well, what do other towns do? Well, I think Matthew can go off research it and come back and say, well, right. this is what's then, going right. on is elsewhere. Isn't Rachel more apt to be able to get us grants to be able to do that? No, I don't think so. She, I think that She's Math, good. she'd be good at going and finding them, but I think Matthew would be able to write a much stronger grant application. I mean, one, of the, one of the other things is, you know, I mean, with Bryson Way, 
we just heard, you know, the, a, a couple of these abutters talking about how dense it is over there, you know, and is he the type of guy who can say, you know, does it make sense? Is this, <clears throat> are these, you know, when we get something like this, can you look at this? You know, does this bylaw even make sense in that area? Well, first off, is that yeah. right here out of him, is it basically, it would, he was checking sewer lines, things like that. Oh, that I was, don't necessarily... No, that was that was no, that was talking about two municipalities when they're conflicting with each other. He had two different things. He had comprehensive site plans, and then he said as a secondary thing, right. there were overlapping were, service issues. Right, but, but to me, I don't necessarily know he, the, the the part of what he was doing was necessarily any planning. I think it was looking at at plans based on different different things, just like we sent out to the engineer. Um, well, but he's he. He's written a chapter in a book on zoning and the controlled space of my Do we get a copy of that? I'm sure we can if we want to buy this book across space and time. <laughs> Architecture and the Politics of Modernity. <laughs> what is it? Architecture? Across space and time. Architecture. So it's Ariel. Edited by it's, Patrick it's, Hockey. Well, the and, visuals on that are crazy. Right. And Finding Common Ground Between New Urbanism and Landscape Urbanism. He's also done some shipping issues, which are not really particularly useful for us. Right. Um, I, I just think that he's. I don't. I, I just think he hasn't really found himself, and hasn't concentrated on one particular area. And I tend to think, and I, I mean, we don't need to probably go much further uh, because everyone has an opinion. I yeah, think I on, I, on, on, on each much. applicant. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that yes, you know, when you first look at it. You know, he exceeds the criteria, but almost to the point of, to me, is that this is a stepping stone to get to to get back into the workforce. I think that's my point. Is that bad? No, but it is, <laughs> it is for this board. If it's going to actually have to keep keep uh, uh, rehiring rehiring in the future. Well, there's a little bit of risk with that. Yes, but a risk with anybody though. Any there, there, there could be risk with anybody, right, Mr. That's Chairman. Right. And this one, we take an initial vote? Well, this one may be a risk we, we want to take. Um, because in the in the short term, there could be a lot that we get out of this. Um, and then in the long term, we may find that there's enough um, of that planning experience that could lead us down the path right. to a, uh, a planner at some point in time. On that. Right, and is how I mean doing up an agenda is that you know you do it once and you get your your template and you basically just plopping people on it in half hour. Well, but that's the, but that. that's just that's just that's just a, a, you know a, a tactical thing that people do. Right, but right. I think what I was trying to get at with the applicants tonight was um, who are you gonna work with? Who do you, who's got the priority? Who sets? Who's the people that you report to? Right. And I think they got it. That's planning board. I think yeah. both Matthew and Rachel kind of understood that. Um, you know, and that's where we go with emotional intelligence as well. It's not so much knowing what to do, but how you do it, and how you work with the public, and how you interact with people that can make or break someone in a position. They could have all the skills in the world. They could be the smartest people in the world, but if they can't work with people, you can have a disaster on your hands. That's going to be part of the key to this position, right. is how you handle the point. Unless, and unless we're all sitting working with them day in and day out, we don't, you know, we're, you know, I think we're going to take a leap of faith. Well, I feel on that on that issue, all three applicants did fine tonight. I, mean, yeah. I didn't see any red flags come up on that. No, they were, I think they're all three strong applicants. Um, I think that at the end of the day, I would probably be choosing between Rachel and Matthew, um, myself. Um, because I just thought that in tonight's presentation, I thought Rachel was a little stronger. Um, and I think her experience, like if I were going to go with that type of experience, I would say her experience would be a little more quickly usable. But I think I still sort of come out on the, on the side of Matthew offering us something different that's worth it's worth exploring and trying to um, trying to 
to bring him in, and I think it's it's not a typical person for this role, but I think that he could be very good at the role. Although on the other hand, I think I, I think I'd prefer myself to go with the safe bet. What's that? The safe bet to me would be Rachel, number one. But because if you want to have somebody that has a planning uh, background, I think that we need then you need to take and go to get somebody who's going to have a planning background and have somebody who can somebody with support of that particular person would be. In, in other words, if we would hire Rachel, then we look for the idea of going to the planning planner stage. But we don't have money for it. We don't have money for it. We've always never had money for it. Well, and that's the problem. So we never get to that second well, stage. Well, I'm going to tell you, you know, I work in Situ. I think of a planner there that they're paying eighty-five thousand dollars a year, who's doing no planning. They're basically just overseeing meetings. Exactly, and and there's my point. But you, I think he could give us that level. You're, you know, you're a. It you would be paying for no, overseeing but, meetings. No, but you, you're. you're no, <laughs> right. you're, well, you're, <laughs> you're assuming. Well, we're assuming a lot because. First off, is that yes, the mundane things may overwhelm him, where the other things may not. Um, I mean, him, he may be, uh, uh, he may be great in the, uh, well, he's a speaker, so I mean, he may be great in the theoretical portion of it, and not necessarily we're assuming an awful lot that he'd be great in the clerical portion of this. Now, look at where, 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 where the primary job of this right now is clerical, all right, and we're into well, the. Is we're into we're into we're, 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 we're looking for we're looking into something else that well, so I, <coughs> yeah, I, I want, some, more, you know, I want somebody who can yeah. understand the rules and regs. I want someone who can that if Brian's not here one night, someone who can help us go through the rules and regs and make a decision. But, but that's not Matthew. I think Matthew can get to that, that point. Matthew could get to that point in a year or so. Yeah, but I don't know that the oh, other yeah. applicants oh. are going to get to that well. point. Because they it's don't. Only, it's a small book of the bylaws. Aren't, it's not like a Bible. It's just. Well, they're not that overwhelming. I think no. he understands what's yeah. supposed to be in bylaws. I think he <laughs> understands what's supposed to be in bylaws. All, all, all I'm it's saying, like a thick I'm, I was going. I'm going. I was going for the safe bet of all of the things that were required by statute to do, which I, I know that Rachel can handle. Um, where we 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 think that that this. Uh, that Matthew would be a great combination of planner and clerical. I'm not necessarily sure that's the truth. So I would be going for the safe bet for the board. Uh, I, I, I think at this point, Brian. I mean, clerical. Where are the clerical? Is that filing cabinet over there? By the clerical is the is the is the minutes, making sure everything's stamped right, in. But it's also sure. it's also partially that filing yeah. cabinet over there, and I think I added to the regulations maybe 20 years ago, that each, each has built that comes in, yeah. we got an, an AutoCAD file for So them. have you, considering you were the author of that, <coughs> did you ever, did you ever yeah, we got several in and no one was ever lived to do anything. Did you ever go back and look at that? Yeah, we got it, we had a box of them somewhere, but no one, <laughs> no one was ever able to do anything with them. Well, that's the problem, we didn't they have got the wasted. capability. Well, we have them, we up, lost we have them up at, we have them up at the assessor's office, okay. and, and the DPW is working on uh, the same system. On yeah. what system? Okay. Yeah, but let me ask a question. How yeah. valuable is that to the planning board? I mean, once the I once the once the subdivision's done, as builds are done, I don't think it's aren't they more important to the DPW than the planning? Yes. Board? They're important to everyone. As, they're, it all gets linked together. together. I know, system, but the planning board's not going to have any jurisdiction over that that subdivision right. after it's accepted. Once they're once they're brought in, they go over. Well, you're losing that. My point is, you're losing that. <laughs> Why do we keep that then? Well, that, that's something that. Because that's when people come in. That's when people come in. They want to see it physically. Like I want to see that board. Twenty, no, years, no, no, 20 no. years from now, they're no, going to no, get on no, the town website and want to go to the GIS <laughs> no, and are pull we, it up on their are screen. We in a position where we can start to discuss. I think that Maryland actually has to go research site plans and things for people who come in, realtors who come in, and other people come in. I've heard her talk about it. And if we had that she information maintained. Files. We wouldn't constantly be pulling out files. It would be here. It is. We can electronically search and find it, and we don't lose a day of clerical work going to look for it in the files. Yep. Yeah. I've, 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 I've asked Marla for files, and she's brought me into the back room over there where you're digging through boxes like this. Oh, and I think that so. Box I think, and you know, like, oh people expect you to be able to send this stuff out, you know, by email or zip yeah. file or whatever. 
I mean, I think the world is changing. But, I, but we're I, not changing with so, it. <laughs> right, but I'm assuming I'm assuming that that Rachel could do that too. I mean, if it's just a zip file held into a file, um, that that she obviously could could do that. Well, I'll combine them together and Which add them to our GIA can system. We can we can see how, we stand, how we stand. You can you can do whatever you like. Yeah. Well, Mr. Chairman, you want to? Are we ready for that? Yeah, I think we're ready for that. Okay. okay. So, um, I guess I don't really know how we do. Let's I guess do, I would. Let's just do, let's just do a roll call again. Of of the so applicants. rather than someone moving for an applicant to be hired, no, we just, just do a roll do, call. Do a roll call. Um, well. No. Yeah. Yeah. Move, move for an applicant to be here. Uh, yeah, I, I'll, move that, I'll move that we hire Matthew Hines to fill the position of planning board assistant slash agent. Second. Okay. So now you can do a roll call. All right. So we'll do a roll call. Ms. Clevin. Well, you made the motions. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Mr. Irv. No. Jim. Jim. I seconded it. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just taking notes for yeah. the yeah. record in case there's a problem with that. Okay. Um, for some reason, we were all waiting for you. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just taking notes here, people. Like that. Uh, if that's the case, are we done? I guess we're done. So we get a motion to adjourn. Take the motion. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No. <laughs>